entering the rivers. Coming up to a bridge, water levels, it's really like a lot of things. You're kind of just crossing your fingers. That was one of the cruises that makes the loop. It sold me on the loop initially. Our boat is about to be electrified. We are basically looking like eye level, it feels like. Hi, we're Jen, Elliot, and Ollie. In 2019, we left the United States and backpacked through 11 countries, all before deciding to come back home and try something completely new, pivoting into boat life. Our current adventure is America's Great Loop, a 6,000 mile journey through small towns, big cities, and the wilderness from the eastern portion of the United States, through the Great Lakes and Canada, and down the Midwest rivers, all aboard our home on the water, Pivot. Make sure you subscribe as we share our journey through the highs, lows, and everything in between. Today we are entering the Chicago River and starting our journey down the Midwest Rivers. This morning we stepped our mast. We got it down to 16.1 inches, which is under 17 and we are about to leave the mooring ball field. We have loved our time in Chicago and our incredible view from the mooring ball field, but it is time to leave. Especially leave these big bodies of water. We are very excited for the calm waters ahead. All right, we got the mast down. Got another foot and a half. Let's go. Ollie, you wanna, are you ready to leave this rocky, rolly mooring field? The mooring field is very rocky right now. We have a south wind. That's the way that we're not protected. So this side of the mooring field is not good. We're like really, really rocking. All right, I'm gonna take this one off first. Okay. Cause I'm expecting you to go that way, right? Yeah. We will most definitely be back. There's so much that we wanted to do in the city and we just, yeah, there's just not enough time. I mean, it's a world-class city. You, even if you live here, you're not gonna be able to do it all. So, next time. We had a fabulous time here and there's so much that we did that was not put on camera. We just, we loved it. It was fantastic to be here. This is it. We're entering the rivers. We're oh. entering the rivers. Oh my god, it's like so much calmer right behind the wall. I know, that's why I came in. Holy cow. Wow. Holy cow. How's it going? I think going down. It is so windy today. Today the wind is coming out of the south and it's pretty windy. So the break walls that protect downtown Chicago are primarily out of the north and the east. So the south is pretty open. We had quite a bit of rocking and rolling. Ollie was not really enjoying it, neither was I. But overall, it only takes a few minutes. That lock was not easy. Very windy. And the ropes weren't quite long enough for us to tie around. So I was just holding against these winds. It's like, no fun.
It is like night and day how calm it is in here. Wow, it's crazy. This is it. This is amazing. Called the mayor and asked them to open up this bridge for us. Just kidding. <laughs> Just for us. So all the bridges we learned yesterday, they have to be able to be opened. Um, so I wonder if that was just a test because we were the only boat around. And it's 25 feet, it's not even like the smallest bridge. <laughs> the one coming up is a pretty small bridge. But um, yeah, they have it open a couple times a year um, specifically for the sailboats to come back in and get hauled out. Wow. Oh my god, that bridge is so close. Oh my god. Oh wow. To come through the Chicago River, you have to meet a height clearance of 17 feet. Pre-lowering our mast, we were about 18 feet. So we lowered it, remeasured it, and we're about 16.1 feet with a little bit of leeway. So we should be under that. Uh, but still, like coming up to a bridge, water levels, it's really like a lot of things. You're kind of just crossing your fingers. Did it measure correctly? I hope so. We're gonna find Crossing out. Crossing your fingers or like holding your breath, like you're breathing, you're just like, oh my god.
Chicago has the second most amount of open, able bridges in the world, just behind Amsterdam, which is, I mean, crazy. It's like bridge, 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 bridge. And they're all right around like 18 feet, like 18 to 25, or actually 17 is the lowest, but then 17 to 25. Really cool. I hate to say it, but I think these views, I don't even think, I know these views are like more incredible and spectacular than cruising up the Hudson River, like from lower Manhattan all the way through like the George Washington Bridge. Like this is so cool. I think it's just because of the proximity that you have and that you are just like, the scale of which the buildings are to what the size of the boat, the size of us is, it's, it's so humbling and so grounding. It's, it's a really spectacular experience. Wow. We have two of our friends on Dog House, Tracy and Stuart, and they're meeting us at the Harrison Street Bridge to take our photo, and we're gonna also get us some film of them. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, guys. That was one of the cruises that makes the loop. It sold me on the loop initially. So we're gonna cruise through downtown. No, it was worth every mile. That was awesome. Turning south off of the Chicago River brought us into the Illinois River, which is technically second on our Midwest River's journey. We're, we're gonna be going through a ton of different rivers as we journey southbound. It's gonna be really neat to see how they're all different. Of the Amtrak bridge, which this bridge is 10 feet. So I don't think any looper can get under 10 feet. But fortunately, they open on demand um, except for during rush hour. And um, we're not in rush hour right now, which is nice. But there is a train parked on the bridge. So we're gonna hold tight for like 10 minutes. You want me to tell you if we're gonna hit? Yeah. Okay. The lowest bridge. The lowest bridge. Okay. All right, we made it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even that. It was not. Was that? Is that not the 17 foot bridge? It is on the chart. Oh. That was more. That was at least. Eight. That was at least 18. Oh, so we didn't have to take down our map. Oh. <laughs> These bridges. The Chicago River was manually reversed by the Army Corps of Engineers. So due to the pollution that Chicago was putting into their river, and then it was flowing out into Lake Michigan where Chicago got, gets its drinking water, um, they wanted to do something about the problem. And so what they decided to do was reverse the flow of the Chicago River, so instead of bringing downtown Chicago pollution out into the river, it would go downstream to 
other Midwest towns down the Illinois River and into the Mississippi. Now, this wasn't exactly okay. To actually reverse the flow of the water, what they did was they dammed it up and basically lowered the cavity there from basically where the, where the Chicago River branches off into the Illinois. Um, they lowered that area so that way from gravity the water flows from Lake Michigan. Now St. Louis and other downstream cities obviously were not okay with Chicago dumping all their sewage that way and all their pollution and so they actually sued the city of Chicago and right before the lawsuit was either in court or something like right before it was activated Chicago was practically done so they rushed in Clipped the uh, the tape, started the dam, started the flooding of water, and from there there was no return. Chicago did end up winning the lawsuit in the end, mainly because at that time science wasn't advanced enough to know about the bacteria in the water, and so their whole premise was, well, by the time it reaches these cities, it's diluted enough so it's not harmful anymore. But the, these small bacteria um, are still present. It's pretty wild. This bridge is also saying it's 17 feet, like 17.0, just like the other one, but this one looks 17.0. This is so short. And what we're using to look at these chart heights is Navionics, so you can go into, there's like a chart view for like how high there are. And then there's also like, if you go into it, there's like an active captain record normally. It'll also tell you how high it is. We are gonna go nice and slow. Lower than slow. It does look like it does lift though, somehow. We are basically looking like eye level, it feels like. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right, you gotta look at it. Uh, we're very close. Okay, all right, we're good. We have like a foot. Yeah. I have no idea how some of these other boats are gonna get up over here. I seriously don't. <laughs> okay, this, this is more like 17 feet. Holy, holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> down. Yeah, I really don't know how some of these really tall boats, like even with bringing some of their stuff down, I think they'd hit. Holy cow. Nice. And so, we never really explain, but you don't have to be 17 feet to go on the Great Loop. There is basically, it diverges a little bit in Lake Michigan. You can do the Calumet River, which goes through like the south of Chicago, and then the Chicago River kind of meets it, and then it becomes, then you turn on the Illinois. So for that side, um, you just need a height of 19.6, which I believe is like the overall height for the loop. But still, wow, that was short. a few hours outside of Chicago and it's like you're in another world surrounded by greenery and hear bugs there's tons of birds we've seen fish jumping it's just like wild like the Great Lakes are dealing with some environmental issues and uh, a lack of fish being in the Great Lakes for so long it's like just super wild coming through here it's really pretty um, Unfortunately, it's also really freaking hot. Um, it's like 90 degrees of board pivot, and since we're so protected, which is amazing for cruising, it's also very hot. I don't know, what is it about locks and pivot and being really hot? Because when we did the flight of five on the Erie Canal, it was also insanely hot. And we're just trying to stay hydrated as much as we can. 
This right here is where the loop comes back together. We have the Kalamut Sag Channel, which is going off the airport side back to Lake Michigan. Uh, and then the Illinois River continues. We're all in this together again. a bit of activity so far that's kind of the thing that I, I guess I expected going down these rivers is that there's going to be a lot of barges so we need to get very caught up on the lingo on the one see on the one see on the two or the one horn two horn whatever very quickly because that's going to be key to our success It feels like just the oven is open and the fans are blowing the oven air onto us. This, these breezes are hot. Hot, 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 hot. Way Kelly It is 95 degrees. It is 95 degrees and we have a southerly, which means winds blowing from the south. And we are heading towards and the south. And we are heading towards the south. So while we have a breeze, it is a warm breeze. Man, I don't think we're gonna have power tonight. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna sleep. <laughs> Oh man! So there's a wall at Joliet that a lot of loopers go to and this wall is a free wall. There is power there. But we got kind of a late start today. Because of that there's a lot of loopers ahead of us who are most likely stopping at the wall and uh, I don't know if there's going to be space for us on the wall to get power. I think what we're going to do, we know several of the loopers so we're probably just going to like raft up to them and tie on to their boat but that they'll have the power and so we'll just not have power so maybe we'll run the generator because we need to do that because we haven't done that in like several weeks um and run the ac for like yeah. an hour to like cool down the boat because it is so hot we put like sunscreen we've been layering the sunscreen today because you can just feel it you just feel like you're getting roasted And now, <laughs> our boat is about to be electrified. The water around our boat, technically. Technically. Now, to stop invasive species, there is an electric field in the Chicago Sanitation Canal, um, which is where we are right now, uh, to prevent, basically, fish from coming from the Mississippi River up into the Great Lakes. Among others, there are two species of carp. If these two species of carp get into the Great Lakes, they could cause a lot of environmental damage. So this is one of their solutions for how to prevent them from coming up the waterway. Um, there is in another area, I believe they're using bubbles, and we've heard the mixed things. Some people say, turn off all your electronics when you go through here, and then other people say it's not necessary. So I don't know what we're gonna do yet. What are we gonna do? Uh, leave it? I don't know. Okay, we're gonna leave it. You heard it here first from the Admiral. If you never hear from us again, it's because all of our electronic gear fried and we couldn't afford to rebuy it. Just kidding. Most of our stuff is not plugged in. We have an old depth finder um, and sonar, so that's it. Radio, radio too, I guess. And the seriousness of this invasive species is almost, I think, if I had to guess, it's kind of like, because we're not from the area, it's almost equivalent to like the python in South Florida and the Everglades. Basically because they have no natural predator. Yeah. And that's the problem with the invasive species. Um, we've been really, we've been learning a ton about this. We've been listening to an audio book uh, called The Life and Death of the Great Lakes by... Dan Egan. By Dan Egan. And it's been really eye-opening to kind of understand some of the challenges that have gone through the Great Lakes as we've been navigating. So if you're interested to learn more, highly recommend reading and listening to that book. Is that from it? What? Where 
radio static static sheet. I think this is it. We are officially through the uh, electrical shock hazard area. Everything still works, no problem. We had some static on the mic whenever we entered, which was a little strange. We did not see any dead fish. We saw a lot of birds, and other than that, pretty normal. Ten minutes out from our second lock and last lock of the day, and we're listening a dual channel on our radio, 16 and 14, which is this lock's radio frequency, and I heard them saying to people that have been waiting, they can come on through. And our friends had to wait earlier for an hour, and now I, we, I think these boats have been waiting here for about the same period. So I called ahead to see if we could squeeze in. We're like 10 minutes out, and he said, okay. So I'm hoping that that hands out, otherwise we have to wait an hour, which is no big deal. I guess you could wait longer. This is the challenge from what we've heard of from the locks on the Midwest rivers is that the commercial traffic and the barges get first priority. And so we kind of get to come in when we can. And so we've heard some horror stories. We will see how it is and you'll see how it is with us. But the locks in the Midwest rivers are unlike any of the locks we've done before. I'm pretty sure this one has floating bollards, so that'll be interesting. It'll all be new experiences and new ways to learn, which we love to do on Pivot. It's time to get the boat ready to lock. Since we didn't really know what to prepare for, I prepared both sides and have lines on our bow and our stern. We'll find out if this is good or bad in a moment. Now, if you guys missed our video on how to lock, I'm gonna link that here. We did that on the Erie Canal, and we've been through quite a few locks together, so we're excited to learn yet another locking system and the different intricacies here. It'll just improve our locking style. You got your life jacket on to go lock? Yeah. How's it looking, babe? Good, uh, I think I'm ready. Can you turn on the bow thruster down there? Yeah. Holy cow, that is perfect timing. <laughs> Thank you, David and Amy from Sail Away for holding up the lock for us. Just kidding. But we are locking through with them, which is pretty cool. Rafted next to Sail Away, David and Amy's boat. Thanks y'all for catching our lines. Um, it looks like there's a mixture of lines coming down and bollards. And this lock is huge. We're coming down 40 feet. Um, and you can tell like, a massive, massive ship can fit in here. It's kind of wild. But we, you know, we're not gonna jump ahead of everybody and go to the wall and try to squeeze a spot. So I think we're just gonna pull out wait for everybody to pass and catch in on the back of everybody. That'd be very rude.
we are experiencing some dark storm clouds to our rear and we have a thunderstorm warning for Joliet from 5 to 8 and it is like 5.15, 5.30. It's gonna come down as soon as we pull into that, uh, onto the Joliet wall. We're gonna get ready, bow thruster, be standing outside. That's my theory. Because that's how it always is. It's boat life. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen out there. Got the wrong. <laughs> There's eight of us coming up. We have two more bridges today. They are both about 16 and a half feet, which we can get under, but in our group of eight, there are a few boats that cannot. And so we are basically all packing through together. Um, and then they're also super friendly, the two bridge tenders, and they said, well, there's not enough room on the wall for y'all. Um, just letting us know in advance, which is nice. Of course, we have Nebo. We are very aware of the wall situation right now, and it will be a raft tonight, which is all good. Everybody's nice and friendly. on Amy Marie started on the rivers and they told us that going through the rivers it's a lot more camaraderie in terms of like the teamwork that's needed to coordinate all of the looper boats going through because it's basically all at the same time you wait for a time at a lock go through all the lock at the same time because the barges take priority like Elliot said earlier and now you go through all these bridges at the same time so there's so much camaraderie there's so much coordination it really does feel like we got this even on just day one. We started running our AC and when I turned it on, it said 90 degrees in here. <laughs> it has now gotten down to 81. I'm sure it's a little bit more time. It'll get down cooler. Holy cow, we got a spot on the wall with power. Just stopped by uh, Joliet Policeman who works for the PD here. And uh, he came by and said hi and basically said that this place is very safe. Um, and just told us the areas of town to kind of watch out for, especially at night. Um, there's been a lot of comments online about, you know, crime here at the Joliet Wall, but the police department is literally right across the way. City Hall is right next to us. And um, so he said, it's fine. He's worked here for seven or eight years. He's never had a problem here. So it's just nice to hear, and it's nice to see the police out, and it was nice for him to say hi. Sunset came so fast after we docked and there are a ton of loopers here. We just spent the whole last, what, two hours just chit-chatting. Yeah. Um, but 
we're officially starting the Midwest Rivers. Yeah, which we're really excited about, and we hope you join us for more videos as we continue down these rivers on America's Great Loop. We hope you guys enjoyed Chicago and the cruise today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. This is it. No, I'm talking to the camera. Lay down. Stay. This Stay. little tail is wagging. Oh, she like oh those yeah, too. she loves it. Like, like anything. Oh my, can you sit? <gasps> oh, oh boy. My goodness. Is there any chocolate in our No, you're good. Because you know what would happen if our thing would hit? That's called a boat project, and we don't like those. So, oh, a big one. That'd be a big boat project.